So, good morning. My name is Katrien van Beurden. I'm the founder and artistic leader of Theatre Hotel Courage. And I have the richdom to travel the world to beautiful modern cosmopolitan cities, but also to war zones and slums. And collect stories around the world in how we survive in the world of today. So, when I was asked to talk about taboos, um, I was a bit confused because I'm not a theatre maker that likes to approach taboos. I find myself quickly ending up uh, having opinions about taboos of cultures that is such a large universe that I rather be an anthropologist when I talk about it than a theatre maker. But what I thought that inspired me a lot around the world is how people handle their taboos and the creativity that arises when they have to deal with the taboos in the situations that uh, they're at. So today I would love to share with you some stories about these amazing people uh, that I met around the world. Now, <clears throat> when I was um, a young girl, one day on a Tuesday morning, a winter day, I was kicked off of high school. Of course, for reasons that I disagreed. But clearly the teacher thought, get out. So I wandered around in Amsterdam in the snow, a little bit lost, and I ended up at a couch next to a homeless person who was dressed up as a gigantic Indian. We sit there together, stared a bit into the snow, and at one point he shouted, shit, my phone is ringing. At that time we didn't have mobile phones, so <laughs> it was impossible that there was a phone. At one point, he said, ah, I found it. And he picked up his can of beer, pressed the button, and answered the phone. <laughs> he said, ah, God, fantastic, you're calling. How are you? <laughs> oh my God, Maria is sick. That's horrible. She has the flu? Okay, and you want me to take over on Earth for a week? <laughs> of course, no problem. <laughs> I will make sure all the rich give their money to the poor. I will make sure there are equal rights and that all homeless people are allowed to dance naked on the streets. <laughs> he hanged up the phone. He stood up, he put his chest up in the air and he said to me, I've got to go, duty calls. <laughs> and he wandered off. I got extremely inspired by how through his imagination he twisted his reality upside down and created the reality that he wanted to live in. So I started to research for a theater that I could create this creativity with. And I started to research the Commedia dell'arte. Now, the Commedia dell'arte existed in the 1540 in Italy. I'm not going to give a whole history class about it right now. But what is extremely important that we have to understand that it was the per first professional theatre of actors. Before that we had, for example, the Greek tragedies, where the stories would be told a lot also by missionaries that would explain the morals of society and how we should live with them, between the gods and the humans. But here with the Commedia di Arte, there were storytellers on the street that said, why can't we tell stories? And not the stories in how we should live, but the stories in what is going on in society. About the one that is oppressing us and the ones that are being oppressed. And so it became highly popular. Because these people went to the squares, gained a lot of audience and started explaining how everybody was surviving and left about this truth. Now, the first female entering into the theater was during the Commedia dell'arte and she used to be a prostitute and they call her the honest hooker. Now, what, that did, what did this woman do? It's almost a rap, what did that, that woman do? <laughs> um, to get audience she would go during the day to the market, to the big square and she would shout to the people, tonight at eight o'clock I'm gonna show you my tits. The people were amazed. I mean, it's great marketing if you think about it. <laughs> and then in the evening, all the people would come to the square to sh the women? At the as well the women, because they were as well drawn by the idea that a woman would just show her boobs like that. 
So everybody would come to the square and she did what she promised. She opened her blouse, she showed her beautiful tits, she would close her blouse again and then suddenly started doing a poem <laughs> and tell the people what her wishes were, how she saw life and how she saw her position. And of course everything changed because suddenly there was a woman standing what she felt and what she thought. So again, they switched it upside down. Today I started Theatre Hotel Courage, or today, 10 years ago. Um, and we create a theatre with archetypical tragic comic masks. Now, these masks represent humanity. For example, the one that pretends to be everything that is not. This one. or the old man or woman. We tell this theater in an empty space with a mask. The actor puts on a mask and metamorphoses in an old man, for example, with text and very important with mime. So we mime where the character is, uh, we tell how it feels and then we have great musicians. Now, I developed this theatre style because it gave me the complete freedom to travel the world. Because anywhere I go, they recognize the one who pretends to be everything that is not. Or they recognize the dictator. They recognize the old man or the old woman. They recognize the boy that is shy. And with the mime, I teach it to local actors and then they can tell me their stories. Like in a war zone, where they say, uh, I was the old man with a can and I walked on the street and the army comes and then they killed me. But they can mime all of this. So through the mime, they make their own decors and they get the sensitivity of the stories that they read. I developed a concept or a show which is called A Room with a Few with the question, if the world is a hotel, what would be your position in this hotel and which character would you be? On this question, I traveled around and I created imaginary hotel rooms with those characters. And I would like you to show you a small clip about the travels we did and the people we've met.
In America, they answered, we live in the conference room. Oh, uh, the conference room. Yes, we live in the conference room. Fantastic. In America, and then you get <laughs> very patriotic. <laughs> anyway, they answered, we live in a conference room and we tell the world what's going on. In Ghana, they answered, we're not even allowed to come close to the hotel. And in the middle of the night, they steal our fish and they pretend that they've catched it themselves. In Palestine, in Janin, they answered, we live in a basement and we're not allowed to enter the hotel. We are trapped downstairs. I met incredible people through these answers. One moment I was in Iran, in Tehran, and a girl in an afternoon stood in front of me and she said, hi, my name is Khadisha. I traveled 2000 kilometers to meet you. She did it alone by bus. And she said, and my answer would be, I would be the face of the hotel, standing in front of the door, opening to the rest of the world and showing them that we are nice and lovable and I would give them a fantastic time. The woman that you saw on the video without teeth, at one point we were doing a scene with an old lady performing that she saw in the moon her sister who died and that she asked her, bring me home, I don't want to live another day. At the moment the actress was doing this, the Indian woman stood up, went through the crowd that you saw, took her by the hand and said, I'm also alone, sister, let me take you home. They walked out of the square into her little wooden cabin and 15 minutes later we went to pick up, pick up the actress who was still with a mask on, <laughs> drinking tea inside of this house. <laughs> also, the same story was performed in Tehran and the actress playing the old lady, she had a translator and I said to her, call him your son so you can play with it in the scene. And at one point she took him by the arm and a woman stood up in the audience and said, you're not allowed to touch him. And then a man stood up and said to the woman, she's allowed to touch him, it's her son. <laughs> this is Collins from the slums of Ghana. And one day he called me through Skype and he said, hi, my name is Collins. Please come to Ghana next week and bring lunch for 50 people. <laughs> I said, of course, Collins. <laughs> Luckily, I could change schedule and I went to Ghana. There I had also a confrontation with the mask. Because in one performance, one of the girls that I teach it how to play with mask, she became sad during a scene. And suddenly the whole of the audience started to talk with each other, watch their phones, look up, look down, and completely ignored the girl on the stage. So I asked, what happened? And then one boy said to me, we're not allowed to look her in the eyes when she's weak. We're not allowed to see weakness. So we have to pretend to do something else. And then another boy said to me, would you mind if I look at her? I said, no, please be welcome. And so he looked her into the eyes and then he got a very cheerful moment. He said, oh, you're lonely. And the girl said, yes, I am. And then he said, I'm lonely too. And then another boy said, I'm also lonely. And suddenly there was a huge celebration of loneliness <laughs> arriving during the theater. This is in the refugee camp and the war zone of Jenin. In this place, I worked for five months training these guys, plus another 10 of these other guys who are severely traumatized by the war that is going on. Now, here I experienced in a very beautiful manner how imagination can strengthen people to get the situation that they wish. This boy, Saber, he played the story of his father, who died during the war. In an improvisation in front of the camp, for people of the camp, he mimed that he was on the graveyard of the camp. And suddenly one woman stood up and said, could you walk two steps to the right? Because there is the graveyard of my son. And could you tell him that he did not clean up his room before he died? <laughs> Another man stood up and said, could you go to my wife and kiss her goodnight? And so the actor walked through all of the graveyard and all stories of the camp start to appear. 
They ask me, could we play the story of the ones oppressing us? And they created a story where there was a big chef cook with his servant that lived in the basement of the hotel who was not allowed to pass uh, to the rest of the hotel. At the end of the show, Saber performed that he was downstairs in the basement living together with chickens. And he mimed the door that he couldn't pass. Now, inside the audience, there were 200 boys severely traumatized by war who themselves are not allowed to pass the checkpoints. So, in reality, they're prisoned. Suddenly, a boy stood up. Somehow, a lot of times, the audience stands up. But a boy stood up and said to him, Could you please, please open the door and let the chicken free? And so the actor mimed that he opened the door, he mimed that he took the chicken and let it free. Another boy stood up and really severely started to do block, 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 like I'm another chicken, let me free. So he had to mime that there was another chicken that had to be freed. And suddenly all these boys jumped up and there were 200 chickens, block, 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 let me free. They shouted to him, open the door and run yourself. And he started to mind that he opened the door and started running through the checkpoint. And there were 200 chickens running along to freedom. Next November in 2017, so this November, I'm very happy to say that all these actors from all these different places are coming to Amsterdam and we will perform the entire imaginary hotel where through this hotel we can share how people try to survive in the world of today. They could survive a government, they could survive poverty, but in any survival we are hitting taboos. Now, as I said in the beginning, I don't like to talk about the taboos, because I have to enter subjects that I rather read a thousand books before I have an opinion about. But what I do want to celebrate is how strong people are in all those situations, using their imagination to empower themselves within those taboos and liberate themselves in that sense. And I think this is more interesting than the taboo itself. Thank you very much.